And you're listening. And you're listening to Smooth, the 98.1 Love Music, Love Life. You are welcome to Business Hub instead of Smooth Drive. And it's brought to you by Stambic IBTC. My name is Jennifer TV. I'm Kylie Baker. And welcome to the program. Yes, indeed. Rodas joins us live here in the studio. Rodas, how are you doing? Good I'm afternoon. Do, I'm doing great, Judith. Uh, Kylie, good to be with you all. Good to be on the show today. Mm -hmm. And a special welcome to our guest uh, yes. as well. Do us the honor and introduce a special yes, guest. Yes, yes. Lagos, yeah. we're, we're talking about the uh, entrepreneurship in the entertainment sector. And we're very pleased to have the uh, chairman and CEO of Ultima Studios, uh, Mr. Femi Ayeni. He's also the executive producer of Lion's Den. Nigeria, you're familiar Lions Den, yeah. Shark Tank, you know, those, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, I heard you talking about, was it Squid Games? Yes, uh, yeah, yes. On, on the Netflix. So this is, this is, uh, he's the executive producer in Nigeria. And this is, a, this is something that I've, you know, talked about in the past, whereby, you know, you can have um, shows around entrepreneurship. Right, that can also be entertaining. So, uh, Mr. Ayeni, thank you so much for joining us. Good afternoon to you, sir. You're welcome to uh, to Business Hub on Smooth FM. Thank you. Good afternoon to you all. Thank you so much for joining us today. Remember that you can join the conversation on our WhatsApp platform. It's 0809-444-0981. Again, 0809-444-0981. We're streaming live on YouTube. So go on there to YouTube. It's www.youtube.com forward slash smooth 981.fm. Thank you so much. So, so Mr. Ayeni, my, my first question to you, do you think there is an appetite out there for a show around pitching ideas to big time business people and titans for funding. Do you, do you think there's an, I mean, Big Brother just ended and that's a completely different show, right? Completely different from what you're doing. What do you think the appetite is like for that kind of concept here in Nigeria? It's um, huge. And um, we, I think we were able to prove that on Sunday um, because based on the reception we got um, from you know, from everybody on, on, on social media. Um, we, we realized that Big Brother was on and we said, okay, we won't compete with them. We let them finish and then we'll start immediately after them. And once we did that, well, we got a lot of hype um, and we took the exact time that they used for their live shows. And um, I think, um, in fact, we are quite pleased that, um, we stayed the course. It's taken like four years to get this show on air, but um, it's, it's been very gratifying just from the first episode. So the appetite, so, I think it's, it's big. Good, good stuff. Is, 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 the, is the motivation here for this kind of content, is it education as far as business is concerned with getting your ideas off the ground and getting funded? Or is it entertainment or is it both? It's actually both, but for us, the passion was education. How do we um, educate and inform the young people? And, but the way you can do that is through entertaining them first. You've got to engage them. You've got to draw them in. And then in the process of drawing them in, then you can um, educate them and inform them at the same time. So all the shows we've done from um, Millionaire to um, Project Fame, do we, we combine both things. We, we try to first bring, draw them in by um, entertaining them. And then in the process, we also engage and we also educate them. So it's a combination of both. So one would argue that um, some persons might say that reality shows are not really realities. So there's some sort of writing that goes on in the background. But for this show, how much of this is based on reality? And how many everyday entrepreneurs in Nigeria get the chance to pitch an idea to a big CEO? Because I saw those people on the on the panel and one of them was uh, the CEO of, uh, it was just, it was really good. Yeah. Well, yes, you are right that it's difficult for them to get them, uh, for entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, to get themselves in front of um, big investors. But we are, we are not providing an avenue for them to do that. I mean, none of these guys that you saw on um, Sunday, we knew before. So people just have to apply now through our website. And um, if the idea is good enough, we will you know, we'll get you in front of the, of the investors. And investors will then make up their mind. So how real is it? It's very real. Investors are going to invest their money because they want to make more money, you know, 
together with the um, entrepreneurs that they, they are investing in. So it, it's real. We're not involved in that process at all of who the investors decide to invest in. And so right. it's, it's not just, um, yeah, it's not scripted in any way. We just, we bring the, uh, the entrepreneurs in, in front of these investors whom we've convinced to, you know, to come um, and do it live on TV. All right, thank you very much for that, yeah. sir. Uh, now that we're still talking about entrepreneurship, um, I'd like to ask this question. You know, um, do you think, in your opinion, uh, entrepreneurship is the way forward for the Nigerian youth, or should you know the youth all look for paid employment or look away from paid employment? I would say that um, you know entrepreneurship is one way out for Nigerian youth, but not everybody can be entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurs have to employ people anyway. And sometimes they have to partner with people. So I wouldn't say that um, anybody that is working for somebody else is not doing the right thing. No, it's um, entrepreneurship is just one of the ways out. And um, a, a, um, a young person can decide to work for in paid employment, needs to work in the bank, needs to work for other entrepreneurs, need to work in um, in manufacturing, in um, you know various other industries, in in radio, you know, on, on TV. So it's not everybody that will be an entrepreneur. There are some people that have a knack for it, because entrepreneurship, especially in an environment like Nigeria, it's not easy. I mean, I've been one for many many years, and I, I can tell you that it's not easy at all to to keep striving on in spite of all the obstacles that you face. So I wouldn't say that um, entrepreneurship is the only way. It's one of the ways for the young people, but clearly they can also work with uh, paid employment. Great stuff. Now, I'm glad you mentioned the fact that entrepreneurship is, is not easy uh, because you know we are in the environment that we're in. But specifically for the entertainment sector, if somebody out there is thinking that they want to um, come up with what you're doing or they want to come up with a, 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 a entertainment content, be it on radio or particularly television, how do they get sponsors? Because you, we can't mention any of them on air, of course, but this, your program has quite, a, you've, got, you've got a regulator, right? You've got, you know, a number of others. How, how do they do it? What's, what's your advice? How do you, how, how does uh, a budding entrepreneur that wants to get into the television space and is creative, how do they pitch it and how do they, snag sponsors how they do that what's the what's the nuggets of wisdom well first they can't give up because they're going to get a lot of disappointments ah. they may be lucky and the first time it was this has taken us for example we acquired the rights for this in 2017 wow it was the tail end of and it's taking this long to get it on air so how uh, yes we did got we got a lot of closed doors on on us people in spite of even our track record and people we, we, you know, we know our network, it still didn't mean that we didn't get um, disappointments. So you can't, you have to believe in what you're trying to do. You have to believe in the content, believe in, and, and just keep trying. And um, you will get disappointments, but eventually once you have the passion for it and you keep striving, you will get people that will, you know, want to give you a chance. So. That, that's what happened. And of course, you don't, you know, you, you said we have several um, sponsors, but you can, they are not all, they are quite, they are all in, in, the, in finance, but they are not really competitors. So obviously you don't want, you don't, you can't have two competing um, sponsors on, on the same show. It's uh -huh. highly unlikely. Yeah. That that is that good actually makes a lot of sense. That's good advice. So yes. if you're if you're taking notes out there, one, be ready for rejection. You got to keep trying. You got to keep pushing, and do not get do not get competing brands in the same sector uh, <laughs> sponsoring your content. Good because advice. Then you'll be back to head to head again. <laughs> e exactly. Yeah, but sir, I want to ask this question. You said um, you got the rights in 2017, and it's taken this long to get on TV. So would you say that sponsorship is the biggest challenge facing content creators in Nigeria today? Probably, probably the biggest. First, you've got to have the right content, you know, and you have to be sure it's the right one. But yes, getting sponsorship is probably the, the biggest um, problem because the biggest challenge, because without the, the cash, you're not going to be able to get it on air. And um, unfortunately in Nigeria, unlike, Everywhere else where 
the producer gets commissioned by media houses. That doesn't happen in Nigeria. You have to buy airtime. So you have to do all the work. You acquire the content, you look for the sponsor, you produce it, and then you go on to buy airtime from, from media houses. So you do all the work practically. And um, so- It's not easy. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> but <laughs> that's a good time. That's a lot of work. We have messages here. We can join the conversation. If you're just tuning in, this is a business hub brought to you by Steinbeck IBTC. We have a guest here in the studio. It's Mr. Femi Ayeni. He is the chairman and CEO of Ultima Studios. And we're talking about entrepreneurship in the entertainment industry. We have a message here from Winga Akamu. And it goes, I like the point that Mr. Ayeni makes about entrepreneurship is not the only way to get a job. So all those aspire to aspire, ex, uh, aspire, aspire to expire people, yeah. <laughs> misleading people about better take note. And that's from Benga Kamu. Benga, thank you so much. So sir, you are no small person in the entertainment industry, especially when it comes to you know the Nigerian entertainment industry and entrepreneurship. But does Nigeria's entertainment industry hold as much promise for the youth as we are being led to believe Others would say, you know, the youth should focus on firm farming, but you've been Ag- here for a long time, or oh, agriculture yeah. per se, but, you know, what would you say? Like I said, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, entertainment is one way, but it's not the only way. It's a, it's a segment of the economy. Um, farming, in fact, is still a much larger segment of our economy, you know, overall. Uh, it's about 60%. Um, and if we abandon one for another, we'll get you know, the same issues that we faced with, with oil when we discovered oil and we abandoned commodities and farming and, and see where we are today. So we can't afford to abandon one segment of the economy because we think one is, the other one is booming. And when we say entertainment is booming, I, you know, I honestly sometimes just have to chuckle because what's the total value? of all this entertainment, you know, we're talking about in terms of, of uh, collectively. It's, it's for some, you know, if you look at the total value in a year, it may not be as big as uh, the, for the amount of money spent on the production of a big budget Hollywood film. Mm-hmm. So we, 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 we tend to overestimate some of these things and um, we need to be very careful not to, not to get carried away that you know, a very fragmented industry that seems to be having a lot of, um, of um, you know, um, success is, it means it doesn't translate to so much when it comes to value. So let, let's, let's be careful. So Great again, stuff. entertainment Great is stuff. the one that- We need to take stuff. a break here. Yes, yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, yeah. Sorry, the network there's a bit slow and he's lagging, but we need to go on a break. Yes, we do need to go on a break, by the way. Don't forget to be in touch and also be a part of our conversation. Uh, after break, we'll take your messages. Send your messages to 0809-444-0981. Don't forget, uh, of course, Rudis is here with us today. We're talking to a very special guest in the studio. His name is Femi Ayani. He's the chairman and CEO of Ultima Studios. And we're talking all about entrepreneurship in the entertainment industry. Stay with us. Stay with us. Tools and tips for a successful business. An atmosphere for our young people to be creative, innovative. All right, so we're just on a short break. It's um, about a two minutes break, or rather, yeah, two, yes. two minutes break. We'll be back after this. As our one stop business solution sure. program, okay. Standing IBTC Bank, a customer centric brand, our sponsor, that likes to give back to its customers, recently launched. Are you okay, Rodis? Like that place Stanley is too IBTC. small for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're fine. We're totally fine. Therefore, we're totally IBTC fine. We reward customers who open totally a new savings account or an ease wallet or top up their existing savings account with a minimum of 5,000 naira with cash rewards up to 1 million naira. To know more about this promo, visit okay. www.standbigibtcbank.com. Let's start by telling you a bit about the rewards for saving promo. The promo was designed specifically to encourage people to develop totally a saving forgot culture. The world you can now open an instant account and fund it with a minimum of 5,000 naira and stand a chance to win thousand naira for monthly draws or the grand prize of 1 million naira. You can also win 500 Naira airtime if you're among the first 20,000 customers to open an account. 
the more interesting part is you can win 5,000 Naira for being among the first 20,000 people to open an account, win 100,000 Naira in month withdrawals, and still win the 1 million Naira grand prize. Winning in one category does not disqualify you from winning in the next. This is an opportunity you don't want to lose. The account opening process is now easy with the Quick Services platform on the bank's website, www.stambigibtcbank.com. Uh, this is Gold Swag. Okay. It's your smooth drive home. All right, we're going back in. All right, sir, we're right back in right now. Add tips for a successful business. Business help. Unsmooth. Stay tuned. All right, studio. And you're welcome back. You're listening to Smooth 98.1. Love music, love life. It's at 5.33 p.m. It's the second half of Business Hub brought to you by Stambic IBTC. My name is Judith TV. I'm Kari Baker. And Rotus is here. We're streaming live on YouTube, by the way. So go on to our YouTube page. It's Smooth 981 FM on YouTube. We're talking entrepreneurship in the entertainment industry. And our guest today is Mr. Femi Ayeni. He's the chairman and CEO of Ultima studios roses yes yes thank you so much for sticking with us sir i appreciate the uh the conversation so along the lines of what we're talking about before the break you're talking about of course you know the entertainment industry and the ups and downs what would you say the industry needs sir is it is it more funding uh or more infrastructure from your vantage point what what does nigeria's entertainment sector need more than anything else at this point probably more infrastructure um you know that's one area where it becomes very difficult for us to compete. If our infrastructure, if each studio has to generate its own power, you know, uh, pump its own, its own water, its own everything, there's no economies of scale. It, we cannot compete, you know, internationally with every, each unit trying to comp, you know, generate its own infrastructure and become self-sufficient because the, the public, um, power and, and the one, you know, is not just good enough. So I think infrastructure is a major issue. Um, funding, you know, there can always be funding for good um, ideas. Eventually, again, if you, if you strive and you keep at it, you get funding. And um, again, Lion's Den is one way for people to get funding, as there are many other ways. I mean, like you, you mentioned, there are some other, um, funding institutions and agencies, you didn't want us to mention their names, and, but they are there and they've actually tried you know, in the past um, to give some funding. So I, I would say infrastructure, I would say even better education too is, is something that will be required. That's why we are trying to put together what we call an entertainment hub at Ultima Studios, where people who have good ideas can just come and hopefully thrive and, and partner with us to do various things. All right, so, thank you very much for that, sir. And I like yeah. the fact that you mentioned infrastructure and funding and also putting up a hub together. Now, my question here is this, um, if someone say, for example, if I want to become a script writer for a TV show, much like, you know, Lion's Den, uh, you know, to create a TV series, um, are there institutions, you know, that can train people such as myself or people out there that, you know, are script writers that want to, you know, uh, you know, go into such things in future or in the coming years? Well, I don't know what kind the formal education in the universities. I'm not sure whether they are training people for what is required in the industry, but there are some, you know, um, smaller institutions out there you know, being put together by practitioners uh, who are training people to be script writers, to be, uh, you know, to, and in other areas. What we keep trying to do is to also, you know, help to train people to be camera men, technicians, because we need all of these uh, different segments are required to bring together a good show. So um, again, part of what we are trying to do is to have an entertainment hub 
where I'm a, a creative hub, actually more a creative hub than an entertainment hub, where people who have passion and skills in certain areas can come and then we help, we help them to you know, uh, develop those skills better. And those that we think we require to use at that point in time, we'll engage them. And those whom we can't you know, use at that time can then use those skills in other places. So, um, you know, I think that's, that's the way to go because formal education, um, I'm not sure for if you go and read, and I'm not discouraging people from reading MassCom because there are so many different areas in MassCom. You can be a journalist, you can be you know, in mass media, but it doesn't mean that it will teach you how to be a script writer. That you may have to learn, you know, um, subsequent to your formal education, which essentially is also good because it's, um, it gives you a foundation. You've got to be a good writer before you can become a good script writer. Very true. Very, true. very, very true. Oh, actually, I did have a follow up on that story. I mean, I think when was the International Day of the Girl Child? Was that well, yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday, yesterday. Okay. Monday. Uh, sir, from, are there just along the lines of, of you know, women and, and, you know, entrepreneurship and so on in the, in the in your sector? Are you seeing it more women coming in uh, or is it still dominated by men as far as the, the script writers, directors, producers, and so on and so forth. How, how do you see things here in Nigeria for, for, on a gender basis? More and more women are coming in. And, um, and I, I like that and I'm encouraging that personally because um, I, I have a soft spot for women myself. So <laughs> in the sense that I was brought up by women, I'm surrounded by women right now, you know, my wife and daughters. So, mm. um, you know, uh, more and more women are coming in. and. To be honest, they are oftentimes far more reliable, more stable, you know, and, you know, people you can trust a lot. I'm not trying to downplay what the men can do. No, of course. To be honest, <laughs> to be honest uh, women, you know, what, what, when they tell you this is it, invariably that's, that's what it is. Yeah. You know, so, so more women are, are coming in and, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I would like to encourage that. That's good. That's good to see. So let's let's talk about the future. What does the future hold? And will we see more shows like you know Lions Den in Nigeria in the next year, twenty twenty two? Fully, I don't know about um, whether it will be twenty twenty two, but in the future, yeah, there will be more shows um, like um, Lions Den. Uh, not necessarily business reality. There will be other kinds of uh, reality shows. Uh, it may be business related. It may not be but there would be more shows. Um, the trend is to, and hopefully as the economy, you know, one of the things that limitates, you know, uh, against us developing this kind of, these shows is, is the strength of the economy. So hopefully if the economy turns around and begins to grow, then there'll be more sponsors who want to, um, you know, put their marketing budget and have robust marketing budgets that will enable such shows such shows to be, you know, to be um, birthed. So that, that I think hopefully in the, in the, over time, there'll be more of these kind of shows. That is very such a very important point that you bring up there. And I do want to follow up on that as far as the economy is concerned. Um, I saw the managing director of one of the medical institutions in Lagos uh, complaining about the fact that one of the issues impacting the medical sector is the inability to import uh, equipment that they need to carry out surgeries and so on and so forth. For, 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 for your sector, for entertainment, as far as camera equipment, studio lights and so on, is that still all imports dependent or, or do you see Nigeria having the capacity to, you know, to make these things in the near future? Unfortunately, it's mostly import dependent and capacity. I honestly don't see it. Again, infrastructure makes us uncompetitive. We are not able to produce these things at at costs that will be cheaper than even when you import them from as far away as China, because you have to do a lot by yourself. You know, there are no economies of scale. So it's um, and for some of these things. To be honest, especially because of digitalization, um, if you are producing a camera here, if you are trying to produce one here, before you produce it, 
they are already developing cameras that are even far better mm. abroad. And, and that's what you know the practitioners want to use, they want the best um, equipment to use. So it's not as easy. And I would say in economics, that's what they call comparative advantage. That's what they call the principle of comparative advantage. Mm. Basically, focus on the things that you can do better. You know, producing yes. cameras, microphones, and all that are not things that for now we can be okay. good at because our infrastructure doesn't support it. Mm. But we can be good at producing, at, at creating content, you know, at entertainment, at in farming, you know, mm. and perhaps assembling tractors for farms and all that because those are basic things, things that don't things. really change mm. you know that's the kind of thing i would say we should focus on we shouldn't focus on things that where before we even produce the one we want to produce it's already obsolete because of you know uh, of digital you know nature of things like that Fantastic points. This has been a very, very it's an eye opener. Yeah, you know, again, from from medical sciences to entertainment, you, you still the infrastructure uh, narrative keeps coming up. Uh, Mr. Femi Aini, uh, Chairman CEO of Ultima Studios, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, to discuss uh, entrepreneurship in the entertainment sector. Very enlightening conversation. Uh, we do appreciate you joining us, and we I guess we hope to have you back uh, in in the near future. Okay, thank you for having me and um, uh, enjoy Lions Den. I, I wouldn't... <laughs> <laughs> definitely will. Thank please, you so much. Please, please watch it on, on Sundays. Yeah, thank you. We'll do that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you so, so much, much, sir. Thank you, sir. All thank right. You. Right, that's it. And that brings us to the very end of the of Business Hub right here on Smooth 98.1 FM. 